Williams of Sunset Hill Solutions. Welcome to the first in a series of videos that I'll be putting together illustrating the new functionality in Information Design Tool which ships with Business Objects 4. So before we get into the Information Design Tool itself, I'd like to spend a little bit of time um, getting the environment set up and the database we'll be using and so forth. So what I'm using for this demo in case you want to follow along is the AdventureWorks database from Microsoft that runs on SQL Server. So if you go to codeplex.com and you type in AdventureWorks and you search, you're going to find a number of entries here. First one is the one I normally pick. And here you have a number of options. So what you want to pick is SQL Server 2008 R2DW. So this will give you the database, uh, the AdventureWorks database that has the tables required for this demo. Okay, we'll switch over to SQL Server. So you can see here I have this AdventureWorks DW2008 database installed. We can see all the tables that are in the database. You notice there are tables with the prefix of dim. These are dimension tables. And the fact tables have the prefix of fact. So we're going to be using one of these fact tables and the associated dimensions uh, as the basis for this demo. So here's a quick and easy way to determine which tables to include in your universe if the relationships are already defined in the database. So I'm in, in SQL Server still. I'm going to go to Database Diagrams, New Database Diagram. I'm going to pick the Fact Reseller Sales table. I'm going to add it. Close. Then I'm going to go ahead and right click the table and click on Add Related Tables. So this will add tables with matching keys to the Fact Reseller Sales table. So after I've cleaned up the uh, diagram a bit, reorganized it, um, I can see I have the fact reseller sales table and I have all of the associated dimension tables that are related to the reseller sales facts. So all of these tables that are in this um, diagram now represent the tables that we're going to want to have in our universe that we build in the information design tool in business objects. Okay, now that we have our database installed and configured and we understand which tables we want to have in our universe, the next part is to start creating it using Information Design Tool. Before we get into that, though, I'd like to point out some of the differences between Information Design Tool and the old Universe Designer, which shipped in previous versions of business objects. So I guess the first thing to point out is that Information Design Tool is a brand new product that ships with Business Objects 4. If you use business objects in the past, you would have been using the old Universe Designer. And this is a screenshot from the Universe Designer, as you can see. It doesn't look anything at all like the new Information Design Tool, and there's a number of differences between the products. Let's quickly talk about some of the big differences with the new Information Design Tool. The first is the concept of projects. This is brand new, and so this allows me to work with um, universe connections and data foundation files from different projects in different windows of the, of the application at the same time if I so choose. Something else that's new is the concept of the data foundation layer. So in previous versions of business objects the data foundation and the business layer were, were the same one and the same thing. The data foundation layer has been separated out from the business layer now and what this allows you to do is to have a universe or a business layer that has data sources from different database platforms. For example, you can create a universe that has tables from a Sybase database and a SQL Server database. So we're finally ready to get started on creating our new universe. So to get started, I'm going to click on New Project. I'm going to call the project AdventureWorks Demo and Finish. Okay, so we can see now we have our AdventureWorks demo project. There's nothing in there right now, so the first thing we need to add is a connection, new relational connection. I'm going to prefix the connection name with the letter CN for connection, so I'm going to call the, the connection CN AdventureWorks demo, and you can optionally put in a description for the, um, for the connection. Click on Next. I want to select the database platform, so in this case it's Microsoft. SQL Server 2008 and I'll pick OLEDB providers. OK, 
Okay, I'll click on Next. So I've entered my username, password, the SQL Server instance, and the name of the database. And I will go ahead and test the connection. And the test was successful. I go ahead and click on Next. I'll keep these default settings for the connection. I'll explain these later on. And I'll click Finish. So now we see a window that has the information about this connection that we've just created and we see this connection listed under the AdventureWorks demo project. So we've created the connection. It's, it's important to remember at this point the connection that we've just created, this AdventureWorks demo connection, is a local connection. It hasn't been published to the repository. And since we're going to be using this connection in web intelligence, we're going to want to have this connection in the repository. So at this point I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to publish connection to a repository. And I'll select the system, next. And you have the option of creating folders for your different connections and setting security within the CMC. In this case I'm just going to put it to the root of the connections folder. And finish. The connection was published successfully. Do you want to create a connection shortcut in the same local folder to reference this new secured connection? And we want to say yes here because what this is going to do is allow us to, once we publish our universe, it's going to be using the connection that we just published to the repository, which is what we want. So I'll say yes. It was created successfully and now we see a connection, a shortcut to the connection which now resides in the repository. So now we've got our connection. Our next step is to add a new data foundation. And I'm going to call this DF AdventureWorks Demo. I like to pre prefix my data foundation layers with the letters DF. You can also add an optional description. We'll click on Next. So this is where you can select whether or not you're going to have a single source connection or a multi-source connection. In this case, we're only connecting to one SQL server that has all of the tables that we need for our universe, so we're going to go ahead and select single source. I will be putting together a video at some point later on that, that shows how to create a universe that has multi-source databases, but for this case, single source. So I'm going to use the shortcut that we just created. So this is the connection that's on our repository. Click Finish. So now we've created our data foundation, but we don't have any tables in there at this point. So in order to add tables, I'm going to go over here, click this arrow, and insert tables. I'm going to expand this connection. So I've gone ahead and checked the tables that I want to have in this universe. Just to go over which ones they are again, I'm taking the DIM currency table, the DIM date table, the DIM employee table, DIM geography, DIM product, DIM promotion, DIM reseller, and the fact reseller sales table. So all those dimension tables I previously highlighted are related to this fact table that has reseller sales information. I'm going to go ahead and say detect keys, detect joins, and detect cardinalities. So this is going to, this step will bring in all of the joins that are defined at database level so I don't have to recreate them within the data foundation layer. Click on Finish. So now we can see all of the tables that have been added to the data foundation. It's kind of difficult to see because it's so um, compressed here. I can change this by clicking on this um, slider here. I can show this at 100%. So now I can see all of the tables, all of the fields uh, within those tables, and all of the joins between the tables that make up this data foundation layer. All right, that concludes our first video. Uh, please watch for the, the second video in this series. It's going to walk through the remaining step to finish off our data foundation layer, and, and then we're going to create the business layer or the universe itself. Once again, thanks for watching.